to another episode of the Best Book Club. I'm your host, Nufatora, and this is the podcast where I discuss the best stories with the best minds in the community. On this episode, I'll be discussing a variety of topics with Hans Gutherson and Wedgie Lover 109. Thank you for joining me. Hello, nice to be here. Glad to be chatting about more Jake and Gwen and the inheritance. One of our like longest episodes too, right? We did like two of them, like more than two hours long. Now we get uh-huh. to talk more about it, which makes my day. Yeah, it was yeah. a two-parter. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. It was a lot of fun, and I'm really glad to be talking with the writer, uh, who will be will be referring to as Bobby during the uh, the this episode. So. I first found your work uh, through Jake and Gwen Part 31, and I seriously have to applaud you for being possibly the most consistent writer I've come across. So many people, myself especially, write a little, then something gets in the way, whether that's issues with motivation or shame around the fetish or really any number of reasons. And they end up taking long hiatuses or just stop writing. Yet somehow you've kept at it for six years now, and there doesn't really seem to be any signs of stopping. I, I, it's pretty inspirational, honestly. Um, I mean, okay, all right, I'll I'll, I'll take the comment. All right. <laughs> um, I mean, there was a point where I took like a two-ish year break, mainly just because of like grind in my own personal life, and I just didn't have time i mean it wasn't really related i mean partly i guess i could say i was burnt out a little bit but it was mostly just because i was working too much and didn't have time to do anything so okay Uh, yeah it i like i guess really in the name i guess the sort of the proverbial name of the game in this community is unfinished and dropped stories or one-offs but i mean jake and gwen is i suppose unfinished quote-unquote but it's there's so much for it that uh i it's it's i i think it's a lot better and i really what about this universe has you coming back again and again um i mean i guess it's just like me and my own specific thing because like all right so when i discovered that i had this like very bizarre fetish that very few people had like i learned that it was like statistically quite rare like like how many people do you think actually have this fetish on planet earth i think it's probably like 10 or twenty thousand people maybe tops good, good guess yeah something like that probably so so already it's kind of rare and there's not that many people making content for it and there's not that many people making good content for it, especially like in the written sphere and on top of that for whatever reason, my brain developed that it was also attached to like this sort of Freudian edifice complex kind of thing, which was also like the mom and son thing, which is kind of a fucked up thing if you think about it, but it's just like things that my brain is programmed to me to be into, I guess. And since like, like I'm making the, the content mostly for me and myself and just like the reactions that I get in terms of likes and comment sections, just like a little small boost on top of that. But yeah, I'm also just making it for myself about stuff that, that I think is hot and stuff that I get off to. Yeah, it's just like a side thing to like compartmentalize my life, I guess. Uh, I love hearing that. That's that's exactly the mindset I think everyone should have when creating. Yeah, content. this is this is gonna be this is gonna sound like kind of a weird. Do you guys know who Christopher Hitchens is? Have you heard yep. of this guy before? So he familiar. was once the anti-theist, he, right? He was like uh, he died like 10, 15 years ago. He was like a kind of. Uh, famous journalist, and he was one of the edgy atheists of the early 2000s. But anyway, the reason I bring that up is, at one point in time, he was being interviewed, and he was asked the question, like, what inspired you to get into the journalism business? And his answer was, because I didn't want to rely on the media to get my news. And that sounds like kind of a weird comparison, but the reason I say it is because, like, I had this very weird, specific kink within a kink, where it's also, like, I get off to the idea of giving and receiving wedgies, which is super rare and weird, but also in this kind of familial, incestuous Oedipus complex kind of way. So, like, there's basically no one, like, almost no one that does it except for me and myself. So I just kind of started creating that just for me. And if anyone else gets off to it, too, then, I mean, okay, whatever, good for them. 
But that's like primarily my motivation, I guess. Okay. It's... Were there ever moments where you felt like, oh man, this is too weird. No one's going to read it or something? Like, it sounds like no, it's, it's fun, kind it's of fun. something you're. No, no, it's fucking DeviantArt. There's way weirder <laughs> shit on DeviantArt. <laughs> that's true. There's, yeah. There's way weird. It's weird because, like, sometimes, like, the, the algorithm on DeviantArt will recommend shit to me. And I'm like, why are you showing me this? I don't want to see this. Like, I don't want to see the weird sonic farting whatever weird fucking yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and i don't know yeah. why like the algorithm i don't know so anyway that's what it is and also i didn't care like i'm not using my real legal name for obvious reasons like it's just a, yeah like the anonymity does sort of add uh and also it's not like a hugely like in the terms of like the things that are like important to me and my life, like the the whole fact that I have this weird obscure fetish that I can compartmentalize to this one weird corner, um, I think just compartmentalizing it and alienating it from everything else is probably the best approach. So the idea of it being like too weird, like I just don't care, I guess is the way I think about it. Okay. And it's it's. Kind of, I think it's kind of interesting that you bring up the whole Oedipus complex things uh, and Freudian uh, mindset. Because I remember Hans has brought up before Freud's sort of flawed thinking of all men want to fuck their moms. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's. I wonder I don't know. if there's really anything to it then. Um. Well, clearly some of them do. I don't know. <laughs> but um, here's the thing, right? Like, I'm not like, I'm not like actually endorsing yeah. the type of behavior in real life that I see in the stories. And just because people get off to a certain thing when they're masturbating alone is not the same thing as endorsing. Right. Like, I think they did some study that says like some ungodly percentage of heterosexual women have rape fantasies, like yeah. a third to yeah. two thirds of them. Mm-hmm. Like, like, what do you do with that? Like, does this mean we should just legalize rape? Because fuck it, why not? Like, what? what is the... <laughs> no, obviously not. So, like, the stuff that... Pe- like, yeah, as it turns out, the erotic mind is not super politically correct. And when people are have, like, weird private thoughts alone, sometimes your brain just wanders to weird places that you can't really predict or, like, take accountability for, I guess, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. yeah that's the thing I, I like about your stories it's like it really is displaying that erotic mind on full blast you know there's like almost no filter of like what if you know the teacher was into wedgies <laughs> at one point you know and what if you know what is inherited is you know jake's videos and jason kind of inherits something from those in some ways you know and it's like just the world all connects around wedgies and you know this mother-son relationship uh, with, like, do you feel like you're ever going to move away from some of that and try something different? Or are you, you know, really into writing about these characters still years later? Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I can't, like, actually predict the future. If I had to guess, I'm going to say that, like, I'm probably just going to keep writing the same stuff in the same universe, I guess, because it's what I've been into for a long time. And I don't see. Like, I don't really see any other content creators doing the exact kind of niche that I'm doing. And the thing is, like, I don't really have an end in mind. I'm kind of just making this all up as I go. I don't know if I don't know if you've been able to put that together. But yeah, like, <laughs> I'm on I'm on chapter like 50 something of inheritance by now. And like the way I plan these stories out is that like I'll get an idea in my head like, oh, this would be like a really sexy scenario. And and then I just contrive situations where you get to point A to point B. And sometimes I'll write chapters that are just set up chapters where there's nothing actually hot going on. But even though there's no wedgies or sex or anything else going on, it, there's still a lot of sexual tension because of like the buildup in between. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't really... I'm, I'm kind of just making this stuff up as I go. And again, as I said earlier, I'm mostly just making it for myself as something to get off to as an outlet, I guess. <laughs> Do you do much writing like outside of the community? Because you're quite talented, obviously. You know, very popular on DA. I'm just curious about that. Since yeah, you've been writing now several years. Um, I don't want to reveal too much details about my personal sure. life for obvious reasons, mm-hmm. but um, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, sort of, but not in the way that you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I guess going back to the sort of fantasy realm. It, why do you think people go so much further in their fantasies? Um, cause there's no consequences. I get. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean further in your fantasies? Like than they do in real life? Yeah, like, Is I, that what like you further in the, than they would or even want to in real life. Um. Because, I mean, again, there's no consequence. Again, you're trying to, like, attach some sort of reason to it, I guess. But, like, it's not really something people think out. Like, it's pure... Like, if we want to get... If we want to stick with Freudian psychology, which is what we started with earlier, it's just pure id. Like, it's just... It's just pure impulse, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, again, like, the, the idea that, like, there's no consequences, I guess, is probably the biggest one. I guess, but I don't think people really know why they're into what they're into, I guess. Yeah, but I think it's fun all the same to try and explore the the, the question. I don't think there will ever be a truly definitive answer, but uh, I, just that, that potential answer, uh, I think, relates so much to the sort of content that is produced for the community, where so much of the time there really is no consequences and Hans and I have gone into uh, some depth in previous episodes. Oh yeah. That was, that was, that was something that I wanted to talk about. Um, during both of these episodes, one of the things that both of you brought up and critiqued me for consequ- uh, very regularly was the fact that the stories didn't have any consequences for the actions and that like, there's no deeper exploration of like the human condition and like what life is like. It's like, what? Like, no, <laughs> Like when people log on to DeviantArt and they're looking for wedgie fetish story, they're doing it because they're horny and they're looking for something to masturbate to. They're not look, like people do not go on DeviantArt for the next great American novel. It's not what they're trying to do. And I'm not saying this as a person who's like opposed to reading. Like I actually read a lot. I read the entire Wheel of Time series from beginning to end twice. So I'm not a person nice. who's opposed to reading. But it's just like that's not the place, and it's not what people are interested in. It's not like when I here's the thing: when I try and read other people's stories on DeviantArt, like there's two things that that can happen: either a they are incredibly poorly written, like you know the ones where like there's no indentation and it's just Absolutely. one giant blob of a paragraph, and there's no and and then you feel uncomfortable reading it because then you realize this was probably written by a child who doesn't have basic grammar skills, so that you just exit out immediately, like you know that. Absolutely. And then there's other ones where I see where it's like very like exposition heavy, where it just goes on and on and on setting up characters. But it's just like it's not what I'm there for. I'm doing it because I'm horny right now and I'm looking for some scene to <laughs> like I, I know it sounds really crass and might be rude, but that's just the no. reality of the situation. Like people like people don't go on deviant art because like they're looking for like some thorough explanation about like the socioeconomic conditions of life <laughs> under capitalism. It's not what it's there for. It's not what they're doing. Hmm. So, I, yeah. That was one point both of you brought up constantly uh-huh. where you're like, yeah. how come there's no deeper storytelling? How come we don't see what Jake <laughs> does his hobbies in his free time? It's like, no one yeah. cares. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that seems to be the thing. It's like, for the most part, I think that is the case. But uh, you have Hans and I who are probably two of the only people who are actually looking for that. <laughs> So it's uh, it's gonna come up in our conversation. But if if the thing like if you're interested in looking for stuff like that, just read a normal book. Or just, <laughs> just, just read. Like yeah. there are normal books out there that don't involve erotic scenes fetishizing the art of like giving people extremely over the top wedgies. It doesn't <laughs> like those do exist. You can read them and you can sure. write them yourself. Well, like, I don't know, like, a pun about you guys yeah. and your personal lives, but, like, if you wanted to, you could just write a normal book. Like, you could get, mm-hmm. there are people who have jobs as writers. You could do that. Yeah. So, anyway, that was, like, one point that bothered me a lot when I listened to your podcast. Mm-hmm. That was, like, <laughs> a good point. Yeah. it's a good point for sure, my friend. I mean, we get, you know, kind of heady with some of that stuff, you know, up in the cosmos of, like, wouldn't it be great if this was also, you know, a deep analysis of the human condition, right? But, I mean, even if it was, like, I mean, you've gained a big popularity for your stories that are so straight 
to the erotic point, so to speak. I mean, like massively oh. popular, right? And I mean, like me, I've been critiqued many times for trying to throw in stuff like about the socioeconomics of capitalism, right, in my stories. Although I don't understand economics, so I wouldn't do that. But like philosophy and stuff like that, the meaning of life as a wedgie fascist. And the people are like, no, I don't want that. I want the wedgies, you know. But uh, so, no, you're 100% right that there's a lot of reasons not to go into anything that isn't the wedgies in a lot of ways. Anyway, um, yeah, that was one point I wanted to make. I took notes on some other stuff, but that was like the big thing that I kind of yeah. took issue with. Um, nice. One of the points you brought up, which is kind of a true critique, is that very early on during the Jake and Gwen days, I did some very weird numbering of the chapters. Um, so there would be like like four chapters together in one, so it would be one. Um, and it was, I think maybe at some point I'll just go back and renumber them and add subtitles to the inheritance. I don't know, whatever. But yeah, um, the way I was thinking of it back then is every time that there was like a, a time break or a point of view break where there's like the, the dot, dot, dot thing, then that would count as a separate chapter. But the more I thought about it, I realized that that was kind of dumb because some of these chapters would be like three sentences long or whatever. <laughs> so yeah. And that's sort of what but I, anyway, that was, that's, that's basically how I was seeing it was any yeah but there it's was still kind of but it can still be kind of dumb and confusing i mean it's not the biggest deal it doesn't actually matter but whatever no i don't think it really is uh anything that needs to be worried about too much and all right let's see what else um you guys talk a lot about the quality of the dialogue and banter in the stories <laughs> that i write <laughs> yeah. yep um, do you guys want to like say your thoughts again before I respond to that, or? Yeah, I mean, I I I think there is a lot of really good dialogue outside of the fully sexual uh, or wedgie encounters that the characters have, but uh, I guess especially earlier, early on, it does sort of sound. I I think as we as Hans and I sort of called it like magic spells or like wah 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 like that kind of thing <laughs> yeah i don't know here's the thing i never oh i think uh i think your voice dropped i don't know what to write when people are wanting and screaming this is super <laughs> deep or crazy you know, oh. like it can be straight to the point and arousing, you know? Yeah. Um, I think one way I describe it is very like quippy and Whedon esque, I guess is probably the best way I'd describe it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like oftentimes characters can be very sarcastic with each other and oftentimes characters will cut people off as a way of like asserting ver verbal dominance, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I like that. I think that is a that is very true to life. Like people don't conversation is never turn based. Uh, people talk over each other. They cut each other off. So it's uh, that you capturing that I think works really well. Yeah. Um, again, it was all like the whole purpose of the chapters is just to get from point A to point B of like mm -hmm. the really hot like wedgie scenario i imagine in my head and how to build up to that mm -hmm. but i always felt that like that sort of like quippy sarcastic dialogue that often cuts people off can sort of lend to that or just like really over the top domineering shit that you see with like yeah yeah and i mean i i think if it if it if it was a case of a bunch of people are creating work like this it wouldn't be as good or as special, but because you're but by comparison, it seems like art. By because, comparison, <laughs> I, because you're probably one of the only people or the only person creating this specific uh, kind of content. It's it is really nice, I think. Well, I think that the, one of the points you made is that it's probably the longest going single series. I think that's probably true. Yeah, I mean, I don't know it for a fact, but yeah. Um, I mean, again, the main reason is because I don't really have an end in mind. It's mainly just the same kind of... Like, I'm just 
like making up scenarios in my head and trying to mm-hmm. force it into these set of characters I've created. And then like in the universe that I've created, if you want to call it that, I've like sort of contrived ideas, like the idea of like industrial made like unrippable underwear that's like six times as thick like i don't even know if that's actually yeah. possible but you know but it sounds hot though so whatever it works yeah. so yeah it's and i mean really at the end of the day it's it's your story so you can do whatever you want with it yeah well at the end of the day it's just erotica i mean that, that is yes. just the main point of it so yeah yeah exactly yeah and that's uh i that's that's a conclusion that hans and i sort of came to is that this your work seems to be the purest form of literatica in the community. And I think that's a big reason why people love it so much. But there's, I think there's just also so much to love about your writing. Uh, like, um, I, I mean, okay. I think that's like, so I think that like people like get attached to like, here's the thing. A lot of people like get off to the scenes that I write, and I hear that a lot. But by extension, a lot of people think, "Oh my god, this is like a work of art. This is a novel." It's like, no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> not. It's not. No. <laughs> like one of the points you made, which is sort of true, but doesn't matter, is that people don't act like real people, or there's no character growth. That was like the thing you said. Mm-hmm. Is that like all of the moms are just there to like shake their asses and have huge butts that their sons get off to. And they have they have like these big granny panties that are there just to be given wedgies, and they'll be mad in the moment for like a minute before they immediately get over it, and it's just the same thing again and again, which it is. It is repetitive, but it's also kind of like sex. This is gonna sound like kind of a a weird comparison, but oftentimes, like when people like watch action movies, like John Wick. John Wick is a great example of this, oh. like. <laughs> Like, John Wick, those movies have, like, really cool and awesome fight scenes. They're, like, some of the best fight scenes that modern movies have today. And because of this, a lot of people like to pretend that the story and writing is really cool and deep, even though, like, (laughs) it's not. It's really dumb. Keanu Reeves is not a very good actor, even though he's a very likable guy, but he's not a very... He's just, whoa. And then the, the thing with the table and the rules that we're making up as we go. I mean, even, like... Like even like the director of those movies themselves has admitted, yeah, we're just making up this plot as we go, and it's just a justification for us to have cool fight scenes. And um, I know it sounds very like arrogant of me to compare my my deviant smut to John Wick, but you know, like the whole <laughs> like the whole point of it is so that people can have these like really cool contrived situations, and all the parts in between is just like it's just the bare minimum to get it there. But people like to pretend it's deeper than it really is. I don't know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think Hans and I fall into that trap quite a bit with our discussions. But in some ways, I think it, in- it increases the fun and engagement we can have with the story. Um, maybe. Yeah. Um, what else? You guys also brought up my amateurish beginnings, which is true. Like, there's a lot of, like, just, I don't know. I don't think it's paced as well. It's not written. There's a lot of grammar mistakes. I mean, I still sometimes have grammar mistakes occasionally, which I could go back and edit them, but I don't really care that much. Um, but yeah, um, I think learning how to write erotica is a skill, just like anything else, and you'll get better as you do it, but when you start, you're always going to suck. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I believe I did. I think it was me who said that and I think I, I think it was something like it, the beginning was a little rough, but then as it as it went, it got a lot better. Um, I yeah, because again, I didn't really know where I was going with it. It was all right. like I don't really plan these things out more than like two or three chapters in advance, really. So uh-uh. I, I, I had no idea when I first wrote that first chapter of Jake and Gwen, I had no idea it would eventually evolve into this whole elaborate thing about like the sister blackmailing to start a <laughs> fetish clip thing it, it was uh-huh. all stuff i was just making up as i was going yeah. and but yeah people were into it and i think there's certain tropes that people that that people kind of naturally incline to so this idea of just like over the top power dynamic of dominant submissive and humiliation and that's just part of that people's erotic minds kind of attract to naturally i guess Maybe. Especially, do you read a lot show. of wedgie stories too, or do you mostly just um, you know write yours. Um, some of them, not all of them. I mean, I don't like. I mean, I'll read some of them, but not yeah. Okay. Sometimes, but not a lot. I guess is the answer. Yeah. 
like most of the stuff that I favorite are pictures and drawings. Sure. I mean, this is the thing. Like, I know that like the visual illustrations always get more likes and more engagement than the written stuff, which I get and I understand because, like, looking at a picture is a lot easier than reading. Like, I guess, mm-hmm. and people's yeah. brains are a lot more visual. I mean, I'm sure you've noticed that too. That like yes. the pictures get way more engagement than the writing. Oh yeah. And most of the, and most of the stuff that I myself kind of favorite are also drawings and illustrations. So I do read other stuff sometimes, but not a lot, just because. You know, a lot of it is kind of crap. Like, a lot of it is just kind of poorly written. Like, the whole... Like, there's a lot of tropes that I see in, like, badly written stories. Like, the whole idea, like, oh, we're gonna give him an atomic wedgie. It's over in one second, and there was no struggle. Like, <laughs> yes. And it's like, it's like, well, yeah. come on, man. I wanted some build up to that. I mean, it needs to be of intense. Course. That's, like, the intensity and the struggle is kind of what, it's like, it, what does it for people i think Absolutely. yeah yeah for yeah. sure that's that's the ultimate wedgie so it shouldn't just happen immediately it's so disappointing yeah, when so it does. many but yeah. like there's so many stories that do that it's like literally uh-huh. one second instantaneously over the head it's like what the <laughs> hell you blue yeah. balling me man this is not cool what the hell yeah. <laughs> it's not cool yeah and all right I, what I, else you gonna say something? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess in the same vein as Between Two Cheeks, you seem to have one of the most successful and recognizable brands in the community. Like you're perfectly blending the slice of life genre that so many of us love with aspects of the fetish that I don't believe are really explored anywhere else. Um, I mean, am I? I I, I don't know. Am I compare? I don't know what the point of comparison would be. I don't know. I mean, I only have like five hundred something watchers. I think. Which is not a lot compared to a lot of other creators, but I don't know. I think my average story now gets like seven or eight thousand views by the first couple of days. I don't know if that's a lot compared to a lot of other people, but I mean, I don't really know. I don't really care about comparing myself to other people in the community. Again, I'm mostly just making this shit for myself. So, um, I don't know. Like, do you? What do you guys think? Do you guys, here's the thing: you guys talk to other people in the community more than I do. I don't really engage with other people that much. So, like. Like, do other people like what do you guys think? I think you at least get uh quite a bit, if not the uh, some of the most. I mean, okay, all right. I mean, I don't know what to do with that. I mean, I don't even okay. I, I mean, I think it just shows that people are just love what you're doing. I think my thing that I noted, you probably remember in the podcast, was like the thing with Jake and Gwen, The Inheritance, because you write it, you know, with such a focus on erotica, I can jump into any chapter and I know, you know, there's going to be a sort of formula to it. And it's going to deliver exactly what I want, you know, and I'm going to come out of it super aroused, you know, super turned on because you have exactly, you know, what I think a lot of us are into, which is, as you noted, those powerful subdom dynamics. But also, I mean, we know through data, which is kind of weird to say, but I mean, we've done surveys of the community and we know the most important thing is characters, you know, and for and you you sort of it sounds like you're a bit humble in some ways, because when you talk about Jake and Gwen and we talk about, you know, it's a story you write just for uh you know yourself and the pleasure of it i mean you take a lot of care to these characters and you don't sort of you know have them doing 180s you know every chapter or all of a sudden you know randall thor shows up and there's wedgies or something you know like there's a lot of attention to detail you put into it which i think adds to it and you don't need to do but it seems like you really care so that you know there's always a quality to the very powerful and very erotic scenes you get every time if that makes sense. I don't know if you agree though. What do you think? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to process that. Um, the idea that like uh, that I put extra attention to detail that other people don't. Like most of the detail that I put attention to is very like visual. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I'll have points where people internally monologuing to themselves for a paragraph or whatever, but most of the time it's just like visually describing, like, all right, this is what this person's wearing. This is how tightly it fits. You can see the panty line through the jeans, and then, and then they walk through the scenario and whatever. Like most of the details that I'm focusing on are just like physical details, I guess. Which, yeah. which weirdly enough, I think a lot of people 
skip on, sure, weirdly sure. enough. Yes. Like I don't know, because it's a very visual... I mean, most fetishes are visual, in a way, but I think especially this one, like, there are certain things that I've noticed that I do just, like, enhance the quality of... Because, like, one of the things that I do when I write is I'll constantly reread the things that I wrote just because, like, okay, this paragraph was crap. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to do a new one again, and so on, so on. Oftentimes, if I find myself, like, repeating words too often, I'll open another tab in, like, thesaurus.com and put in synonyms. So even though I'm referring to the same things again and again, it sounds like a different thing, so it doesn't sound repetitive. Yes. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, this is a weird thing I noticed. I noticed that contrasting colors tend to do it, a lot for people or at least for me personally it does like one of the things that people get off to a lot is like the color of the underwear very weirdly enough yes and i don't know <laughs> why <laughs> and like the physical I, I, or the physical design of it and something that i noticed is that like if there's like contrasting colors like if you want like the image to pop in people's heads next time you're writing a wedgie scene just like open another tab open up a color wheel in like the other tab and like whatever color you want the underwear to be have the pants be the opposite one and that's something that i've noticed that people tend to like it, the image tends to pop more in people's heads but i don't know why it's a weird thing that like it, the color of the underwear is a thing that gets people off a lot but i don't really know if i understand it completely because it's so visual as you already noted you know like fetishists and especially men like our minds we crave that visual stimulus that's why you know videos and art are so much more popular in the community and the stories so the stories that do capture some visuals and you know the most important thing is the underwear you know what it looks like and then when it's not you know the typical white granny panties or something when it's something a bit more creative we can fix it in our heads and we can visualize it and you know and uh, without a doubt that makes it more erotic and more rousing I yeah, think, I don't know. There's, I, I think it, at least with colors, like especially white and pink, uh, it's it's sort of like this feminine thing. I I wonder, like if uh, they, this sort of innocent thing that it's very uh, girly. That's what it is. Yeah. It's very yeah. And like in comparison, <laughs> like it gets this kind of taboo kind of idea in your head that like I'm really not supposed to be touching this right now, and that's what mm -hmm. makes it feel yeah. I don't know. There's also this very creepy tendency that I've noticed that people describe like underwear as very childish, which I find to be very creepy. But it's very <laughs> common. Like people was like, "Oh my god!" But it's like, "Hello, kitty panties." Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. Why? But here's like that's like literal like six year old underwear. That's very <laughs> creepy. And it's, but it's like super fucking common. But it's like, oh, but no, these characters are over eighteen. I swear. But she's wearing. Hello Kitty. It's like fuck off, dude. Like it's fuck off. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. One yeah. of the issues with the fetish, you know, we got some of that overlap, you know, because it is such a childish prank, some people think or they are turned on by the more childish aspects of it, which is problematic to say the least. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. It's like a fucked up. That's why. That's another reason why I don't like to engage with other people in the community as much because it's very. I mean, no, wrong. I can tell that you guys are both grown ass adults by now, but like, there's a lot of time <laughs> where it's like it's hard to tell. Like, is this person even over eighteen yet? Probably not. Sure. And then, so yeah. And a lot of this again, like I said earlier, a lot of the stories that you find written are like just crap. Where there's like there's no indentation or anything. Like it's just ugh. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I I agree, <laughs> but I think it, overall the quality has improved from the olden days of Lucky Fetish and Wedgie Girls. Those forums, um, I think overall there's a lot more to legitimately enjoy rather than force because it's all we have. Yeah, I don't know. It's a very like statistically obscure fetish. Which is weird, yes. because, like, when you compare it to, like, other fetishes out there, this one seems more reasonable by comparison, I think. It's yeah, it's very vanilla. Like, any woman that I've been with that has, that I've shared this with, and I've talked to other people who have kind of expressed the same thing, it's like, oh, that's it? Like, it's not, it's not a big deal at all. So. <laughs> I don't know. I think probably just because it seems so childish and infantilizing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. here's the thing with that like i haven't told my wife that i have this fetish like at all and i don't ever really plan to so i don't know Well, uh, I guess... Yeah, you're not alone in that. There's many people in the community. I don't fear much, like, beyond DA, but, like, on Lucky Fish forums, there's people there who, you know, they've been around a long time, and they have, you know, kids, and why? Oh, and yeah, yeah. We're going to yeah. tell them, you know, it is such a, you know, it's such a private thing, uh, and mm -hmm. we get so used to, yeah. you know, not talking about it, or, or like you yeah, said, well, compartmentalizing. I, mean, I, I don't know, you know about sure. you, because I've heard that there are other people that, like, wedgies are the only thing they can get off to and nothing else, and if you're in that position, then, I mean, that just, I mean, I don't know, man, that fucking sucks, dude, I don't know. But I can also get off to, like, normal sex stuff, too, so it's never really, like, prohibited me in any way from dating women in my life, so... Mm -hmm. I'll be able to just compartmentalize it to like. I mean, that's guys. That's why I'm outside right now because I don't want my wife to walk in on me having this conversation. <laughs> <That's why. laughs> I totally get it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Well, so how did you first get into the fetish? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think anyone really knows. It's just like early days of like prepubescence. You find yourself being being curious probably because of like a cartoon or a tv show i think and then it just kind of comes there and you can't really get rid of it but it's just kind of there i mean it's kind of a typical story mm -hmm. i've never been given a wedgie before i've never given anyone a wedgie before i kind of don't want to because i feel like if i did give one a wedgie in real life a lot of the magic would disappear for me because mm -hmm. i imagine the, like I think that like the way we imagine them in our heads is probably not at all close to how they would be in real life. Yes. Just yeah. because like most underwear would rip almost instantly anyway. So Yeah, I mean it it is absolutely a different experience. Uh I guess that's I guess there's there's a reason why I keep coming back to this this created content uh along with Part uh, participating in it with my partners. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think. Here's the thing. Well, like, I just don't know. Just for me personally, if I'd be willing. All right, let me tell you guys a personal anecdote of a guy I went to high school with. Right. So there was this guy who I was buddies with. Uh, we went to high school together, and he started dating this girl for like two years, and they were just like this like perfect picturesque couple. Everyone thought that they were perfect together. And like there was nothing that could ever break them up, and they were planning on getting married, Sarah, Sarah, like the whole thing, like you can imagine it, right? Yeah. Now he reveals after they'd been together for like two and so years that he has been keeping a secret from her, and he's had this sexual fetish that he's just been so embarrassed about that he couldn't ever reveal it to her. And she, out of the goodness of her heart, the pure bleeding heart she is, decides that no, 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 you, we are perfect. We are going to make it through this, and you can share with me whatever you want. So anyway, he reveals what his fetish is to her. Now, do either of you boys know what a bug chaser is? No idea. Not a clue. These are people who have a fetish for having STDs and giving STDs to others. That's wow. their kink. Wow. That is their wow. fetish. So anyway, so that, they, they tried it. They tried to incorporate this into their sex life when they were together. And here's the thing. He never actually gave her anything. He would get himself tested regularly just to show her, like, all right, listen. But it was just, like, weird, dirty talk while they were fucking. Yeah. It would literally just be like, yeah, I'm fucking your cunt and giving you AIDS. And, like, that would, that yeah. would be, like, what he was into for whatever fucking reason. Yeah. That's what his brain was into, right? And um, it completely destroyed their relationship. They ended up breaking up almost immediately after that. And yeah, but y'all remember that like before he revealed that they were like a perfect picturesque couple. Everyone thought sure. that they were going to be perfect together forever. And just that one reveal, like just ruined it for them permanently. Mm -hmm. And do I think that if I were to reveal to my wife, who is currently pregnant, that if I secretly have a fetish for giving my mom, who has a giant ass, constant wedgies all the time, would this maybe ruin my relationship with her? I mean, maybe not, but like, I don't really want to risk it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, anyway, I can understand that's that. where my brain, that's yeah. where my brain's at. Although mm -hmm. it's just a risk reward thing because I don't really gain anything from it. Because as I said earlier, like I already get off to regular sex fine anyway. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of an unnecessary. I've been able to just compartmentalize this to just like weird shit that I'm into that I post on DeviantArt and I can keep a secret and then that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay. I mean, I think JR is sort of in a similar boat if you if you're aware of him. Uh the guy who runs the the Wedgie Girls Patreon and he's been he's created Fox and Stacy videos and all that. He's done so much. Um mm -hmm. he he sort of seems to have a similar mindset around it. Um, I mean, how much do you know about him personally? Have you met him or anything? Or? Yeah, I actually did an episode with him. <laughs> Went in pretty in depth with it, and he's he's been pretty open about like not sharing it with his wife, being very secretive about it. Yeah, Wait, but did he hired? Did he years. like hired actresses and stuff? But his wife yep. didn't find out about money yeah. switching games. Yeah, no, it's, he it's, has a like an online website business he does, so he travels around a lot. He's able yeah. to run this whole you know whole thing. Oh, interesting. Anyway, yeah. I've probably watched the videos, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah. Uh, so then, how did you? Do you remember how you got into the community? Um, I don't know. I just kind of like, like I kind of said earlier, I was kind of just consuming content, looking for stuff to get off to. But since I had a weird specific kink within a kink that basically no one was making content for, I just thought, fuck it, I'll make it myself. And since like I'm not artistically talented at all, I just assumed, all right, process of elimination, I guess I'm going to write stories now. And that's mm -hmm. just kind of how it started. Again, I wasn't trying to like become like the most popular person. I don't really I don't even think I have a profile picture on my DeviantArt account. <laughs> like I'm not really trying to I I'm, again, I was mostly just making it as an outlet for myself, but that's it basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and yet even though you've only, you've only been doing that, like at least five hundred people have come to have, have stuck with it, and you get you get tons of views and tons of favorites every time. It's, I think it's a it's great weird. Thing. Here's the thing: I don't know what the point of comparison is because, like, here's the thing: I have like five hundred watchers, but like when I post a new chapter, like I've noticed the ones that are more intense and erotic tend to get more views than the ones that are build up, obviously, right. but like. Even my regular ones would get like anywhere between like seven, eight, nine thousand views within the first couple days. But like, so there are people who are non watchers who are clicking on this stuff on the regular, obviously. But like, I don't know if that's normal or not. Like, I don't really have a point of engagement of like, I don't know. I, I think it is pretty normal of a, I think just across the board, even beyond the this fetish and community, you, 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 if you make some kind of appealing content to some degree, uh, you're going to get a lot more people who are just consuming it and aren't sticking around, I suppose. Um, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, and the fish might be bigger than we kind of suspect, you know? Like, I've almost 2,000 watchers on DA, but it seems like, you know, the community's super spread out. And there's people who you'll never see on DeviantArt, or you get people like JR who says, you know, their videos do gangbusters in India, for example. You know, it's like we have no idea how big the community really? is. In India? Some ways. Wait, what? Really? Yeah, yeah huge in India, apparently. And you're like, mm -hmm. is that? And then you wonder, like, is that to do with there's a lot of wedgie fishes there? Or do they like the asses? Like, it's, it's, we don't really know, like, what the deal is with some of that. Uh, I mean, I made some YouTube videos and they've gotten, you know, tons and tons of thousands and thousands of views. And you're like, are they all like just in the North America, which we where we know from like the surveys I did, that's where the vast majority of wedgie fishes are. But I don't know. We know I don't speak, in the UK uh, and stuff like that as well. Well, I don't speak Hindi, so I have no idea or like yeah. what the maybe there's like different websites that are popular in India that we don't know about. I don't know. I imagine there must be, right? Like, we know there's stuff, you know, like in Japan. We know there's... The Japanese you know, like are fucking weird. I don't sell. know. The Japanese True. got... They sell underwear and vending machines and stuff. So you gotta think, like, isn't yeah, our wedgie Jap huge over there? I don't strange. know. The Japanese are fucking weirdos. I do not get it. <laughs> not. There's so much weird shit about Japanese culture that I do not understand. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that sort that culture is sort of there's a lot of uh, interest in it because there's like this thing called sharking. If you guys are aware of that, I don't know what that is. Okay, it's basically uh, men going uh, running up to random women on the street and like pulling up or pulling down their skirts. 
oh, well, that that's good. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> it's, it's kind of it's a little problematic, but uh, it's something. Fucking Japan. I don't know. Japan seems very sexually repressed as a culture. I, I don't know what's going on there. Like, I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't consume that much Japanese culture. I play, I've played like some JRPGs, which means I've played Persona 5 and maybe nothing else. Uh, I've watched maybe five anime in my whole... Here's the thing. I do think that like there is some interesting stuff that you can get from Japanese culture, but I'm like a top shelf weeb, if that makes sense. But there's just so much garbage underneath it that's just weird and creepy. Like, why are the Japanese so obsessed with schoolgirls? I don't get it. It's yeah. just like like they're very into schoolgirls, like a lot, like <laughs> like the incorrect amount, and I don't fucking understand it. Yeah, but I, I think for a while, a long, long, long time, uh, at, the, at least before the internet, uh, like Catholic schoolgirls were also a very big thing for young men in America. Um. Yeah, there were. Here's the thing, like. I didn't realize this until very recently, but like most cultures prior to like the 1980s, it was a very normal thing to say that like, oh yeah, teenagers are fucking hot, right? Like it was, it was very normal. Like listen to any song written prior to 1980, and it's yeah. like these grown ass men talking about, oh my god, look at these 16 year old girl, ain't she beautiful? And it was just very normal. No one like the Beatles did songs like that. <laughs> yeah, Neil so Young. It was just a, like prior to the 1980s, it was very normal. For like grown ass rock stars to be like, yeah, teenagers are fucking hot, and no one blinked an eye at it. And nobody, <laughs> and, people still don't. Well, no, I think it's a bit more shunned on today, right, at least in right. Western cultures. But, I least... think Japan is pretty still pretty normal to go. Yeah, teenagers are fucking hot, <laughs> but you know, at least in Western cultures, I think we've moved to the point like, all right, let's move the line until at least they're eighteen, please. Right. Yeah, please. I mean, if you look at like, please. um, the one really big neil young song i can't think of what it's called uh like touching me touching you that song uh um people, i don't know maybe it was incredibly still... normal like listen to any song and yeah. especially the 50s like 50s pop music like it was super common no one played. the reason too you know same thing same uh, thing it wasn't teams. until the 80s when reagan came along where we were like yeah let's not do that. yeah, yeah <laughs> i don't I mean, know like yeah i, I think people still give cultural uh items like that a, a pass for some reason like uh sweet caroline that's the song i was trying to think of like people still yeah. either they don't realize what it's actually about or they just don't care for whatever reason um i don't know like there's a lot of songs people don't actually think about the lyrics for it. they just like it because it's a four chord song so i don't know yeah that is true. That is true. That's that's a big reason why pop is so big for music. All every pop song is just the same four chords. So I don't know. A lot of them don't even pay attention to the lyrics. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. What were we talking about before? And this is like a major tangent. <laughs> <What are> we... <laughs> uh, I mean, we're just kind of going on like how you got into the community, but um, I think you sort of. Um. That. Yeah. Again, I just made it for myself because I had a niche of like. Freudian mom with big butt and horny son also likes wedgies and for some fucked up reason that's where my brain went and no one else was making content like that so I did it myself like that it, it's really just that yeah okay. nice so then what does your writing process generally look like and has it changed at all from when you uh, first started posting Jake and Gwen in 2017 um not really at least i don't think so uh my writing process is i use the d i don't use word because uh again i share a computer with my wife can't let her find out about it so i go on the deviant art i don't know if you guys know this but if you go on the deviant art submit literature and you can save it as a draft and it just saves it automatically so i just do that yep. um and yeah i'll just write it like you know a paragraph or two at a time sometimes like i don't know I don't really know how to describe it. Like, like I'll have ideas or scenarios in my head, and then I'll try and map them out, and then I'll also save the draft, go back, come back another day, reread it, realize what I wrote the other day was crap, erase it, do it again, and, you know. It's just like the same kind of writing process. I think I've gotten better at it over the years, of course, just because you do it over and over again, you get better at it. 
But um, yeah, I don't know. Well, the one thing that I like about the DeviantArt draft thing is it tells you how long of a read what you're saying is. Because I don't want anything that I write to be more than like a 10 minute read. Because I think if it's longer than 10 minutes, people just won't read it or they'll just start like, they'll start skimming over it a bit. So, yeah. I mean, you'll get like, you'll get the, the crazy passion of people like Hans and I who will read like a, a 30 hour long <laughs> uh, story or novel. But yeah, you, you do sort of seem to. I think well, depending... yeah, but no, when I'm in that state of mind, this is the right. Sure. Like again, I read books a lot, but it's just like if if I'm doing it on Demon Door, I'm doing it just because I'm horny. That's that's just yeah. the reason for what it is. And I think for Get most you. people, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess in that in that same vein, the Jake and Gwen Part Twenty. I said it during the Jake and Gwen two parter episode. Gwen's first atomic is the hottest piece of writing I've ever come across in this community. So <laughs> thank you for that. All right. Um, all right. Well, you're welcome, my dude. I, I feel you. Okay. Um. So what, um, are, what are your inspirations yeah, and influences? On. If you have any. For like how I write? I mean, I don't know. It's kind of just like where my brain kind of goes to automatically anyway. Okay. Are you so talking that's... about like what, what my influences are for like the aesthetic of what I'm into or like what, what are you trying to like? I don't know what. I don't know if I understand the question. Uh, I mean, I guess it really just however you'd like to take it. Okay. Um, uh, what are my influences if you have I mean, don't get me wrong sometimes i'll read other people's chapters and if i think something is written in like a very good way then i'll try and incorporate that like obviously i'm not gonna like copy and paste it verbatim i'll switch words and framings out here and there but yeah like i mean i think most people do this where they read other people's stuff as influences sometimes it's stuff that i just kind of spontaneously come up with yeah um one thing that I, I try to do, which I noticed that a lot of other writers don't do, is try to like actually like describe the process of the wedgie itself. Like we were talking earlier, that's very common trope. That's just like instantaneous atomic. And it's over the head in one second, and that's not fun. Like that's not exciting at all. And I just want like every single millisecond. I want people to be able to visualize it. So like, okay, this is you sticking the hand in the pants, and it's kind of tight, and you got to dig around there, and it kind of tickles a little bit, and then you pull it up a little bit. You expose the color. The color excites you a little bit. Then you pull it up a little bit harder and harder, and so on, so on. And I think that process is kind of like what excites people more than just like the one and the thing about it is that i don't actually think it's that hard to do like it does kind of get a bit formulaic after a while yeah. i think but it's just like very few people actually kind of do it with like the process of it mm -hmm. yeah like like so much of it is like okay like i feel like we skipped a very important step here and yeah. it's just not as exciting <laughs> yeah yes. and you're kind of like you're forced to imagine how it actually worked and like Wait. Yeah, but it's like now I'm doing your work for you. It's like yeah. you're the one yes. that wrote the thing, buddy. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do you do you enjoy writing any of your characters more than the others? Um, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I feel like it depends what you mean by like enjoy. Like, are some of them because more obviously. Fun? It's uh, continue. You were saying, are some of them more fun, or are you just kind of drawn to them more? Um, I mean, I think by fun, I think you just mean like things that turn me on, right? I mean, that's that at the end of the day, that is what this is, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, obviously, I think like writing the moms as a sort of wish fulfillment kind of thing is kind of exciting. So whether it be Gwen or Maria or Judy or whoever, like just going out of my way to like, cause the whole thing is that they're all wish fulfillment characters. Mm -hmm. Like none of them behave like real mothers do. It's kind of a wish fulfillment porny kind of thing. But yep. yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, one thing that you notice uh, that you guys pointed out in your last podcast about this is that 
you pointed out that there was a dad that Jake has a dad, and that's apparently <laughs> very rare, even yes, though he is. doesn't. Yeah, and I did not realize that until you pointed it out. But yes, it's yeah. like, like the kind of tropes that you see if you, is always like, if you're talking like uh, characters having families, it's always like okay, two siblings. It's usually two sisters who are the same age, but yeah. they're over eighteen. We swear, and um. Yeah, and sometimes there, sometimes there's a mom, or maybe it's just here's the thing: there are areas of the fetish that like they only are into male, male. Whether they're just there's like the gay side yeah. of the fetish that they're only into dudes. So maybe it's more common there, and I just don't go to those spheres. I don't know. No, even there, it's brothers. So it's like the, the same thing with sisters, same age as like brothers are the same age. So and that man, brothers- a lot of it's like. A lot so of it's like, you know, there's bullies or they go to, you know, uh, they go to a new school or something and there's some like senior who's like has to, you know, kind of take care of them, but also, you know, gives them a lot of wedgies and stuff and eventually become boyfriends is a big trope there. So, but dad's super rare across the board. Yeah. It's weird because he's not even like a super important character in the story anyway. <laughs> he's not even... <laughs> but he's there. He's, he's yeah. present. He, yeah, he shows well, up for like two whole chapters up. in Jake. And then when I did the inheritance, I'm like, I have no idea what to do with this character. <laughs> and I don't really care to bring him back. So I'm just going to say, oh, uh, he and Gwen got divorced and now they live separately, I guess. <laughs> and, then, and then I don't really explain it. I mean, maybe I'll explain it again. Sometime in the future, maybe I'll bring him back. I mean, don't like. Here's the thing: a lot of the stuff that I end up bringing back in the inheritance is just people like bugging me about it in comment sections or in messages. <laughs> That's kind of what like, I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes people just bug me, and, like, "Please bring back Laura Krause," and I'm like, yes. "I really wasn't planning on doing that, but <laughs> I mean, okay, bad. fine. To get you to people to shut up already, <laughs> fine." <laughs> and it's like yeah. sometimes people will send me weird requests, like, "Hey, can you write a story?" involving wedgies about this anime that i like it's like no i'm not no, no. <laughs> that's not what i do no i'm not it's like yeah. just write it yourself this is the thing that bugs me about people it's like actually learning how to actually write wedgie stories is actually not a very difficult skill to learn how to do it, it's really not <laughs> but like yeah. i don't know the way a lot i hear or at least the way people talk to me about it. People act like I have this god-tier skill of writing. It's like, guys, it's really not as hard as you guys seem to think it is. It's really not. So if you have a specific weird kink that's like a very weirdly specific scenario, just like write it yourself, dude. I don't know. Yeah, and I think, I think, I think a big part of it is something like some, that. what you said of people are kind of just coming here to get off and leave. They don't want to put in the work to create want someone else to do it so they can sit back with their dick in their hand and just hang out um maybe i guess i don't know and i was thinking about this like because like again i I generally believe i don't think learning how to write wedgie erotica is actually that difficult because number one if you're look if you don't know how to write it just like read what someone else does and then just change a few words around and then just edit it a couple times and put your own twist and then that's it. Like, it's really not as hard as most people seem to think it is. It's not as hard as drawing because, like, learning how to be artistically talented is actually, like, an innate talent that most people don't have. But, like, I don't think learning how to write very tropey erotica is actually that difficult. So I don't know. And, it's, and then it's even more bizarre when you realize so much of the other stuff that's written out there is crap. Like, so much of it. Like, so many of the, so many of the one-off stories are just, like, the one paragraph with no indentation shit. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But sometimes, yeah. Again, I don't really plan. I don't really have an ending in mind. I'm mostly just making this up as I go. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of the beauty and possibly the trap of this slice of life type of writing. So it doesn't really need an ending. But then you can, you might end up feeling like you're stuck writing this thing uh, because people keep asking for it, or like you just. Well, no, I'm not doing it because people are. At, I'm mostly just doing right. it for myself. So, like the, however long it takes me to write is however long it takes me to write it. And if I get burnt out and take a year long break, then tough shit. Then like whatever. So. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. People already have so much of your writing to enjoy already that I think it's even more reasonable 
that uh, I think it's more yeah more okay if you take a a long hiatus. I don't know. Here's the thing: like sometimes I'll even go back and reread my own shit, but I wrote it like years ago, so I forgot most of it, and then I'll be like, "Oh shit, damn, I'm good." Like this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You guys ever do that? You guys ever have like a True. narcissism trip where you just go back and read your old shit? Because you forgot most of it by now. You guys ever do that? I did one yeah, time. Writers, we, we writers are narcissistic people, certainly. We like, yeah. you know, we love when we can get some of that good comments and feedback and stuff, even if we don't oh, yeah. like admitting it. And we certainly and, like to go back and say, oh, yeah, that was really good. I'm great. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That was really hot. I'm really good at this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, let's see. What else? I'm just going through a list of notes that I took. Okay. Um, well written plot, escalation, no chance of group. What'd you think overall though? You like our conversation or you like these two? I have no clue what they're talking about. No, no, this is fine. This is basically what I was expecting it to be. Okay. Again, the main thing that annoyed me is that you guys criticized me for not having character growth or explorations <laughs> of the human condition. <laughs> Yeah, and I read that and I'm like, what the fuck point, are these two yeah. talking about? Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just that's, that's totally anyway. That's we're two of the most vocal people about one thing that in stories. So it's it's <laughs> we're gonna have our we're gonna have um Again, just write a normal book. Just just write a normal book. It's not hard. Just go. Yeah. Well no, it is hard, but it's not as hard as people think it is. But just write a normal book. Yeah. But you I, should I, write one. Write the Wheel of Time sequel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, odd. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Um, lack of consequences. I mean, the there is a lack of consequences long term for anything people do, but I think that's kind of to the point of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if there were like long term consequences for the things people did, then most of the characters would just be in jail by now, and I don't think that'd be fun. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I I think. Honestly, my favorite aspect of everything that you've written, not counting the super hot wedgies, is Gwen's introspection on why she's diving so heavily into this fetish, especially with her own son. Is there a chance of this plot thread being expanded on in the future? Um, I mean, it's kind of like a subplot that I explore. I mean, I occasionally will have moments where characters will go into these like long monologues of introspection, like... Why am I like this? Why do I like these things? Well, how is this my life right now? And, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that, right? And I think that does a lot to kind of, like, get people in the headspace of the characters. So that way, when the wedgies do happen, they feel more real, I guess. For sure. Because I guess I think that's the main point of it, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, it's just to make the again, wedgies like, feel as real as possible. Yeah. And then you you made a comment about like Gwen not being a good mom and trying to be a friend rather than a mom. Um, I mean, like, okay, I guess that's true. Mm-hmm. But like, but at the end of the day, it's just a wish fulfillment thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and I think that's is this, not. Is this self insert? Like, are you Jake and Jason in these stories? Is that how you picture it? Um, I think that's another wish fulfillment thing. I mean, it's not yeah. like. I wasn't like this horrific loser. Again, never been given a wedgie in my life. Um, I mean, it's sort of like there's moments where Jake has these kind of like snarky thoughts to himself, and I guess that's maybe a self insert a little bit. But again, it's mostly just wish fulfillment shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there was a moment when I was in college where I did legitimately, I did legitimately try to look for a frat just because I was hoping maybe that there would be like a hazing ritual that involved getting a wedgie. I never found one. But I did seriously try doing that, and it was incredibly fucking stupid. And um, that really did happen. But aside from that, yeah. Um, the story oh, yeah, also, well, you know, you use wedgie time a lot in the story. It's like some of the characters, are like you know, fascinated with the sort of power these words have. Where's that come from? Did you like see that in a video or something? Oh, I don't fucking know. Um. <laughs> I probably read it in a story one time and then it stuck with me. And then I think I used it. I think the first time I used it is in the school wedgie with Paul and Jake. I yeah. think that was the first time I used it. And then it just kind of become a trope. 
that I think people have become accustomed to, I guess. But I don't know. Again, I don't know. I don't know why my brain's like this. I don't know why this is what I'm into, but it just is. So, hmm. I mean, I, I think it's pretty inevitable that writers will put a piece of themselves into their writing, whether it is an actual self-insert or not. So uh, I think it's just unavoidable. It will happen. But um, yeah, I, I, it it's definitely is uh it feels it feels like a, a lot of wish fulfillment and it's it's just a lot of fun i don't know i think like all stories are kind of like that to an extent um one of the yeah. things that you guys brought up at the end of yours where there's like the four different genres of wedgie erotica or something something like yeah, that yeah what i consider the four subgenres of realism in this community they Wait, can you just explain that to me real quick? Yeah, uh, so basically, I this is sort of a, a breakdown of realism as I found it through all the, the reading that I've done in the community. Um, and so basically, I break it down into four different what I call Earths. Uh, so there's realistic Earth, where Earth is normal as we live it every day. Alternate Earth, where Earth has changed to some degree, mainly focusing on wedgies idealistic earth where earth has changed to fit the desires of the wedgie community or some aspect of it depending on the writer or fantastical earth where earth has changed to be unrecognizable like lord of the rings and dungeons and dragons okay okay so the reason i asked you first one the idea being like a completely realistic story that would totally happen in the real world um i don't think people would like that story i don't think mm -hmm. they would because, like, what would a realistic story even, like, look like? Like, okay, we have the, this guy who has a, he's had a fetish since he was very young by watching a cartoon, and he doesn't really know why, but he's kind of uncomfortable with it. But then he grows up with life, and then eventually when he gets older, he has a girlfriend. He tries to explain it to her. She's a little weirded out by it, but maybe she's open to it. He tries it once, so the underwear rips instantly, and then they break up. Like, that that would be what, like, the realistic, quote-unquote, wedgie story would look like and i don't know if people would want to read that i don't know i like it i mean i can give you two examples of stories that i consider to be realistic because of how they are written uh feeling the fire okay. the burns and by nicely done and um waistband variants during atomic wedgies a study by enigmatic systematic and those two stories are like isolated they're like only like the first story is two characters isolated in a room interacting solely with each other so you like the outside world never is seen uh and it's it's a very private thing and then the second story is just a single character doing the scientific study on her own with no go ahead from a board for funding or uh the university or whatever so i consider those real experiments because, with wedgies on herself yeah like i think it's i think that is realistic well, uh, because they're um, why you can have <laughs> why, but because you can't have fetishes. Why would she do this? I because does she's she have the a fetish? fetish? Yes. So she has the fetish, but why is she conducting it as an experiment with notes? Because she's a scientist. <laughs> science. What? What is the science for? What, is she making a pill? What, what is this? What effect? <laughs> what effect the uh, atomic wedgies have? On what? But on does on what does it make her pussy wet? Like what? What is the science? Uh, I, I just just seeing like I, I guess sort of like the mental state and why it turns people on what is actually the best um, position for an atomic wedgie okay <laughs> but like what's the science going on here I don't know I, I you'd have to ask dr. Bradshaw herself dr. Bradshaw where, where yeah, did she go to college <laughs> uh, I, I don't I don't think it was ever Dreams. said in the uh, in the story itself, so I'm not sure. All right, listen, man. I'm not trying to razz you and give you shit. I'm just trying to point out that like this is all fantastical wish fulfillment type stuff. Like all of it. I'm not That's true. Right, but I mean, you do have female fetishists out there, and it's a very yes, it's do. it's yeah. done privately as opposed to going out in the world and experimenting on other people. Uh, so, as I suppose, as realistic as it can be, as like it it might not be uber realist like this is this has happened or this will happen but i think it's it could very well happen or it might have happened who knows 
There's probably better examples than that one. Magni Poles did a good one a couple of years back about, you know, fetish models uh, doing like a wedgie scene, basically. And it was basically like, what would it look like? And he was, it was a bit more over the top, certainly, but it's like, you know, we know there's models who are making wedgie videos. So here's like kind of how that looks, you know, and like, it's not, you know, as super crazy as like, oh, well, all these guys and their moms are super into wedgies and the teacher is and the hot sister is Rebecca, my favorite character in the stories, you know, your favorite um, character. yeah, Rebecca's the best. Who's your favorite though? It's not Rebecca. You're wrong, unfortunately. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, my favorite character, dude. Um, I don't know. Either Gwen or Maria, probably, just because that's like the center of like where my sexual focus is. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know. A lot of people really hate Rebecca, which I kind of knew that like people would. Like she, I kind of made her as like an over the top manipulative villain character, but people were after me like years later, like like four or five years later after I wrote that, like please bring her back and let her have her canal. It's like, bro, I wrote this shit four or five years ago, and you're still mad about it. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Calm down, my dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's showing how much people love what you've written. Like, they they want to see these things. They want to see these things brought back and. Um, they just it stuck with them so much. We wedge you fascists also just never let anything go yeah. unintended. Um okay, maybe. Uh, will we ever get to find out what happened in the time between Jake and Gwen and the inheritance? In the story? Yeah, like how Jake and Gwen drifted apart and where Jason went and how I like, like all that. Like will we ever find anything out about that? Um, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the idea of, I mean, I kind of filled in the gaps a little bit about what Jake was doing. I mean, Jake went to college and then he had to move out and do his own right. thing when he was in college, I guess. I kind of hinted at that right. a little bit. Oh, no, now I remember. He was in the middle of college and then Jason talked him into dropping out because he was an English major, which is stupid. And, um, and then. Oh yeah, and then he's like, "Yo, I'm rich. I'll just give you like a hundred million dollars. Just go live with me." And he's like, "Fucking done. Like, I'll take that. Yeah. Fuck college. Fuck working. I'll take." Who yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess really the biggest thing that I'm curious about is how did Jake and Gwen get out of making the videos for Rebecca? <laughs> so maybe hopefully okay, that. So, okay, so about that, right? So here's the thing. Um, it's kind of. I always thought it was kind of assumed that like they were making the clips and stuff like off screen because I didn't want like I wanted there to be more drama that I wrote about going on aside from just filming these clips because if every single chapter was just all right here's the clip of the week that they filmed and here's the bad acting that goes along with it that people kind of like somehow then I think it would kind of get old but it's just kind of assumed that all the clips that they film are still going on off screen I guess. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Okay. And it kind of still continues. Like, I think, oh, yeah, I wrote one time in The Inheritance that, like, all right, yo, we're fucking rich now. We inherited all this money. So we're still going to make the clips, but we're going to upload them on the internet for free because we're just really nice people. And, um, yeah. Yeah, they'd be the best content. So they're all presumed, so, it's, so it's presumed that they're still making clips and content, uploading them. It's just that, like, they're all kind of happening off screen i guess because if i wrote every chapter like all right here's the clip of the week then i think don't get me wrong people would still like it and think it's hot but i think people i think at least me personally i think it tends to be hotter if you think of it as like a spontaneous real thing in the moment rather than a a scripted thing i Mm -hmm. think okay yeah all right well that's that's i'm glad to have that question answered all right. Any other questions? Yeah, I got a couple more. Uh, do you have All any right. advice for aspiring long-time writers? Long-time writers uh, or aspiring? Um. Well, if you're trying to be like a new person, the best advice would be to just like start, I guess. Because here's the thing: oh, like when and this is true of like literally everything in life and every skill is that when you first start doing a thing, you're gonna suck at it. Like, no matter what, it's unavoidable. 
So, like, if you, like, go in knowing, like, what it is that you want to do, then just try making it and learn from the process and just try and be better next time, I guess. And the whole thing about it is that, like, just make sure to, like, actually put effort in and try and improve. But, like, at the end of the day, like, like you're not getting graded for this. No one cares. It's fucking deviant art. Like, no one's gonna... <laughs> Although you might get and... some critique from me. <laughs> you might get on a podcast. Oh, wow. Um, anyway. <laughs> and, um, I guess for people doing this a while, um... I don't know. I mean, I guess it'd be the same thing. Just, like, make sure you're writing what you're actually passionate about. Don't just do... I mean, unless you're literally getting paid to do commissions or whatever, I don't care about that. Like, I'm not gonna... Like, there, I know there are some people that do paid commissions, even though it doesn't even look like that much money anyway, but, like, whatever. That's what they want to do. But if you're a person that's just doing it for yourself, then just write whatever it is that you're into. Whatever weird, specific thing. Because it's already a very weird fetish anyway that very few people have. So, you, mm-hmm. like, there's no point of really, like, trying to censor yourself or anything, mm-hmm. I guess. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on the fetish and community as a whole? Um... <laughs> I don't know. I don't really engage with it that much, so I don't really know. Mm. Okay. Do you do much role playing or anything with people? Um, sometimes. Uh, there was one person I used to do it with a lot, but then that stopped happening. But yeah, the only way I try and role play with people, it doesn't really work out because they're running on. I don't know. Like I'll try it for a while with some people. But then usually it's like a one-off thing. And they're like, oh, yeah, we'll continue this next time. And then I never continue it. Like, you know, that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. Where do you think that we can expand into with our content? Like, is there anything that we've sort of been skirting around? Or like any, any new areas that you've noticed? any new areas i mean i don't know there's not that many spheres to get into with any sort of mutt really i mean like so there's written erotica which does exist but it's kind of sparse i guess there's the drawings which seems to be the most popular stuff um there are videos and gifs which do exist but i don't think they're as popular just because they're a lot more work to do i guess mm-hmm and then, aside from that, I don't know what else there is. Like, there's the professionally video. There's like the professionally shot videos where you hire porn actors to film it for you. Some people do those, but not a lot of people do those. And also, like, I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't know if this is just me. Like, uh, but when I watch those videos, like, I, there's a certain fakeness to it because I can tell none of the girls actually have the fetish themselves. So they're just kind of following a script, but that they don't know the intricacies of it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys can relate to that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, aside from that, I don't know, maybe audio erotica? But I don't know how that would even work. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there was the one... I don't remember who read it, but the, somebody, someone hired a, a fetish model to read one of the soccer stories, uh, and people loved it, but I don't really think there's really been too many audio versions of stories at all. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I don't know. Because again, it's not like a huge fetish. It's not like a huge community of people. Again, it's probably right. 10, 20,000 people tops. So, I mean, who knows? You said it's big in India, but I don't know. Maybe I'll learn to speak Hindi or I'll <laughs> learn five words in Hindi. I don't know. Well, is, there, is there anything that you'd like to see more of in the community or just content? Um, I don't know. I mean, maybe. I think that, like, uh, the quality of most of, like, the drawings and cartoons and pictures seems to be pretty good overall, but I've noticed that, like, a lot of the, like, written stories, I mean, there are exceptions to this, obviously, but a lot of them just aren't very good. I know it sounds very arrogant of me to say, but it's just true. (laughs) A lot of them aren't very good. And maybe, like, um, they try and do that better, I guess, but I don't know. Again, I don't really engage with the community that much. I mostly just make my content for myself for the most part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, is there anything that we can look forward to from you in the future? 
um, another inheritance chapter published a month <laughs> from now. Okay. Okay. Nice. Hey, I mean, that's absolutely something to look forward to. Yeah, it's usually once a month-ish now, sometimes, I don't know. Okay. Well, is there uh, anything else that either of you would like to discuss? Um, I think I'm good. Yeah, no, this was great. Thanks for coming on and chatting with us about yourself and the story. This was a lot of fun. All right, cool. It was just fun talking to you guys. Um, yeah. I guess I'll head out now. I get Real quick, do you have anything you'd like to promote? No. Okay. What about you, Hans? No, it's, I'd just say, if you haven't, read Wedgie Lover 109 stories. They're great. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Well, thank you both so much I for agree coming well. on. Uh, is there, if, if there's anything that you would like to hear me discuss, or if you'd like to come on for an episode, leave a comment or send me a message on DeviantArt or Lucky Fetish or Discord as New Fatora. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode of The Best Book Club.